Bag Your Barbecues, man. This your boy, Mr. B. And we are about to get down on the 980 again. Matter of fact, let me show you what we're going to use today. You know, I stay with gadgets, right? I'm always coming up with something new. Well, new to me because I'm starting over. But uh, today, I actually got two of these I ordered off Amazon. I actually put the link in the description below. Uh, if you want one, if not, oh well. Beer can chicken, right? This was pretty easy. Um, one, I prefer the, the porcelain because it, unlike the uh, stainless steel, easy to clean. I just wipe it off. I can pour my uh, my stuff in here. Like instead of using a beer can, um, a lot of times what I used to use in the past was I take a beer can and pour different things in there. Um, Coca Cola is a good good one. Coca Cola. Um, if you want to pour that in the beer can, if you got the stand for that. But today I am using Corona. I'm gonna use a bottle of Corona. Um, had an event uh, the other day and still had a couple bottles left over. And of course we call this beer can chicken, so what better way than to actually use some beer can? Beer can. Beer. So we're gonna use Corona this time. I'm gonna chop up some onions, um, pretty big chunks of stick in here. And we're gonna just let it go. Um, the chicken has been seasoning for about 18 hours, maybe. So it should be well thor thoroughly seasoned up under the skin as well. Um, all we're gonna do is set it and forget it. I'm gonna put it on here check it every hour but it should only take about i don't know it depends this is actual big chicken so it make two two and a half hours i'm gonna set it about 275 um it's about to rain so stick with us and we'll be back all right we're back y'all and uh of course i got my handy dandy tool i think the last video i did uh wood chips inside this little handy uh collector it's perfect for the uh the gravity fed all I do is stick it inside. And uh, today we're using wood pellets, I run. I want to see what you know what the big deal is with wood pellets and see if it actually gives off uh, some form of smell. Today is going to be garlic, paprika, and onion. Mixture of that. Yep, garlic, onion, and paprika. So stay tuned, like I said. We're going to see if we can get some kind of uh, smell out of this and see if I can determine if this, uh, taste-wise, if I can determine if it actually... Uh, tasting it different with this chicken. So stay tuned, we're about to put this 980 to use, y'all. Once again, we are back. Um, it has been about an hour and a half on this chicken. Not even looking at it. We're gonna check it out. Originally, I started, I pumped my grill up to about 400 degrees. I wanted to clean the grill grates um, from the last cook, even though it had nothing to do with this. And then, trick, here's what I did. I took my chicken, Normally you take food out of the refrigerator about 30 minutes before you put it on the grill so it can come down to room temperature or almost close. The reason for that is when it's down almost close to room temperature and you stick it in the grill, the temperature from your grill doesn't automatically get shocked and then go from maybe say 400 to 225, right? So that way you eat, especially if you're using charcoal um, or wood, it's easy to control your temperature like that. So um, food for thought. Another thing is what I did this time was the complete opposite. I literally, because I pumped it to 400 so I can clean it out, and then uh, once I let it sit for about 30 minutes, then I end up uh, um, dropping it down to 250. But what I did was I knew that I was gonna take a whole chicken and put it on here. So instead of me waiting for it to drop down to 250, which would have probably been another, eh, another 30, 45 minutes depending on this grill, I literally took the cold chicken right out of the refrigerator uh, and then threw it on the, on the uh, the uh my contraption uh, that i put the onions in and then threw it on the grill so without further ado i'm gonna show you this give you a close-up and then we're gonna wait i'm gonna take some beer um of course it's corona but uh i ain't gonna put it on here because they might block my video but anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna show it to you real quick i'm gonna close the lid and then i'm gonna pause for a second of the video and uh marinate it with the uh spritz it with the uh corona um and then let it cook for another Maybe I wouldn't have it, and we're gonna put the temp on there and see what it happens. Here we go. Let's, let's see, see the camera so I can make sure y'all getting the right view. Yeah, in that barnyard pimp in the house. Y'all see that reddish color? Mm hmm. I don't know. I don't know about these wood pellets just yet. That might be from the grill. I, I refuse to believe wood pellets do this. 
Hey, comment below if you are in love with wood pellets. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna take my temperature, I'm gonna close it right quick, I'm gonna spritz it, take the temperature, and then that'll determine how long I let it sit, because chicken is done at what temp? 165. Um, a lot of people that cook for a living, they'll take it off at about 160, put it in containers, because if you know anything about, let me close this real quick, if you know anything about cooking chicken, um, you don't want it to be raw, right? So putting it off at 160, um, especially when it's overheat, you already know that it still will continue to cook for a little while. So if you put it in the right containers, that temperature has a chance of getting up to about 165, 170, depending on how hot it is. If you got your, your grill about three, 400 degrees, it'll still cook until it gets about 170, 175 degrees, which is perfectly done, still juicy, not dry inside, especially if you're doing bread. Uh, but anyway, just food for thought. We will be back when it's done, y'all. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, barbecue is a barbecue S. Check it out. We're about to uh, complete this process. It's already done in my mind. Uh, it's been off about three hours now. Uh, I wanted to keep pumping it until I, uh... oh, I thought that was a rat. So, no, nah, but uh, somebody got a remote control. Anyway, um, yeah, it should be been on about three hours uh, at 220. 250 uh, started at 400 throttled it down as soon as I put the cold chicken on them uh, don't recommend that on a regular basis but I was doing something different cleaning the grill first um, but anyway let me show you what it looks like it definitely looks like a, a French oniony and garlic look um, I like the redness it's not overly dark let's spin it around hopefully it ain't too hot yeah, that's warm. Yep. Looking good. Look at that. Look at that chest meat. I'm about to tear this up. But anyway, give me a second. Uh, we're gonna bring it in the house, and I'm gonna uh, cut into it and let y'all see. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and I am about to cut this chicken and see just how well it uh this particular grill performs. Let's see here. I just want to cut it so you can see it. There we go. I'm going to taste this myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. Enough said, y'all. We'll be back. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's good, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. B from Backyard Barbecue once again. Uh, about to sign off. I want to thank everybody for looking, paying attention to the 980. And I'm just going to keep pumping videos with this until uh, I might use my cheap El Cheapo. Because um, we use them from time to time. Um, but just getting in the flow of this until I uh, get my pockets back. And then... Uh, You'll see a multitude of other grills. You know how I do. But uh, stay tuned for those. But like I said, I'm going to keep doing videos on these. Um, the folks today was just trying this out and getting used to the temperatures. Man, this thing worked like a champ when installed properly. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to hold you guys. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll let your boy.